Here are five points and questions about the song Church Girl. Now, none of this is designed to tear down any specific name mentioned here, but to add to an already ongoing conversation. So number one, we know that the beginning of the song, Church Girl, is a sample from the Clark sisters' song, Center of Thy Will. The question is, did the Clark sisters actually hear the full song before giving it the go-ahead for the sample to be used? And if so, are they okay with the contents of the song? Did they have any reservations at all? The original song is a plea to be rooted and grounded in God's will. Church Girl is a song promoting being centered in self-gratification. Number two. Now this is really for the church. Looking past the clear profanity, the swear words, and lustful chorus, I draw your attention to the direct blasphemy in the line, you know you got church in the morning, but you're doing God's work, you're going in. Now Jesus the Saviour said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. This line is attempting to get people to believe that they're doing God's work by dancing provo provocatively in a party. Is everything relative, or is God's word still the truth? Number three. A line in the song says, No one could judge me but me. Now, that's not the truth. The Bible directly says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Additionally, the line, I was born free. I mean, you may have been born in the land of the free and the home of the brave, but even the legal system in your country can judge you. Additionally, when we were born, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, slaves to sin. That's why we need to be born again. And that's a change that God himself performs in us. And number four. It will be interesting to find out who Beyonce's target audience was. It's clear that the church girl is the target audience. But is it the church girl who already parties the night before going to church? Or is it attempting to lure the church type of way into this type of life? The reason why most Christians find this song so offensive is because it would appear that the lyrics are intimating that, quote unquote, the church girl is repressed and oppressed. Lines like, church girls acting loose, or I'm fine aside, I've finally found the urge to smile. And lines like, as soon as I get in this party, I'm going to let go of this body. The reason why this is so dangerous is because it's not a new story or a new concept or a new tactic. Right from the beginning, right from the beginning, the devil deceived one third of the angels in heaven into believing that his thoughts were right, that he was the woke one, and God's laws were outdated. Equally, the devil, through the serpent in the garden, deceived Eve into thinking that making human beings miss out on something. This song has the hallmark of intentionally trying to deceive. Number five. Why has this song so divided the opinion of the church? Some saying there's no problem with it. Others making it clear that the song Church Girl is somewhat purposefully attempting to provoke debate among the church. 
Let's give up all of the, the ministries we have in the church that teach piety and holiness to little girls at an early age. Let's throw it away if Beyonce is right. If they're all just church girls and they're all little thoughts and they're all twerking and they're all living in sin like that, then, then, then so be it. The question is, do these lyrics purposefully attempt to provoke the church? Or is there an attempt to give the green light to Christians, half in the world, half in the church? And this is why I ask the question. Songwriters are masterful when it comes to the spoken word. They often use metaphors and similes that on the face of it look like they're talking about one thing, but they're really referring to something else. So stay with me because this is where it gets a bit deep. The very last line of the church girl song says, I ain't trying to hurt trying to bring life up in your body. Who is the one speaking in this line? Now, now it could only really be one of three options. It could be the church girl in question. She could be speaking to the man that she's found in the party. And this would be consistent with the rest of the lyrics which are speaking in first person all throughout the song Church Girl, as though the church girl for speaking. So in this scenario, the song is getting the church girl to believe this is her thoughts. She's the one speaking. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, etc. The second possibility is Beyonce could be saying to the church girl, through her lyrics, of course, through her lyrics, of course, that she's trying to get the church girl to be alive again and to feel and be expressive in her body. Touching on the point made earlier, that it's suggesting that the church is somehow repressing or oppressing girls or women in the church. But lastly, I want you to consider this carefully. Could it possibly be an attempt to awaken the church to directly show opposition to the world. The church is the body of Christ. And for the most part, the American a Laodicean spirit of lukewarmness and compromise, trying to fit in with the world, and is fearful that the truth that we hold as Christians is going to somehow offend someone. Could this line, I ain't trying to hurt nobody, trying to bring life trying to bring life up in your body be a direct challenge to the sleeping Christian church that it's time to be awake, alive and actually stand for something again. And this would make sense as the whole song is talking about a Christian compromising it would be wise for Christians to pray for Beyonce compromising for church girls who are being pleaded to live a life outside of the will of God and for the people of God to get back to reading and understanding and believe in the Bible and not being conformed to the changing trends of the day.